the president of Iran is swapping his traditional clothing for a baseball cap and tracksuit. In photos published on his website, Hassan Rouhani is seen out hiking, something he apparently does a couple of times every week. Well, since he was elected in June, Rouhani has made an effort to distance himself in some ways from his hardline predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He's engaged in a sort of campaign of public relations, and much of that has been launched on his personal website, a Facebook page and Twitter account, all of it in English. This photo was put on his Twitter page immediately after his phone call with the U.S. President Barack Obama. The first time such contact had been made with an American leader in more than three decades. He regularly uses social media to congratulate Iranian sporting achievements, especially uh, women's. His tweets have often targeted the issue of women's rights. In September, he tweeted, Iranian women are educated, capable, powerful. In this government, we're hoping to ensure equal opportunity. Stuart Bruce is with us. He's a public relations consultant, trainer, speaker and author who has recently been to Iran for an international PR conference. Joining us now live from uh, Leeds. Do you think it was what you said and the others said at this conference that got the message through to President Rouhani that the times they are are changing? Um, I think it was something that President Rouhani was already doing. If you look at what's been happening over the last few months, there's been kind of an increasing emphasis on improving his public relations profile and, and Iran's public relations profile. But I think what's quite interesting about it is it's obviously all aimed at a global audience as opposed to a domestic audience. So what happens when a people poke fun at somebody for trying to modernize when it doesn't really suit them? And I'm thinking perhaps of Vladimir Putin here who takes his shirt off, shows off his pecs, uh, wrestles with bears, dives in and out of freezing water. Everybody says, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, but I, th I think the case with Putin, and actually the case with Rouhani as well, is it would be much easier to poke fun at that if it wasn't genuine. But I think the fact that President Rouhani does genuinely go hiking, or so I understand, and Putin is a kind of genuine man of action, I think that works a lot better than when political leaders, say, pretend to be fans of a particular sport because that's what's that's the image they want to project. I so don't think it works unless it's authentic. So, Stuart, what, what, how does it work? I mean, there's no way that um, an official photographer would have been there by chance. Somebody must have said, look, this is good. Um, it'll make President Rouhani more popular to some people in his own country, perhaps more modern in the outside world. How do you go about changing somebody uh, so that they accept this as, as their role? Well, I think one of the most important things to do is you actually need to be capturing lots and lots of those moments. And I think perhaps one of the best examples of that is that kind of world-famous um, Twitter photograph um, that went around the world when President Obama was elected um, with a picture of him kind of embracing Michelle Obama. And that was a photograph that had been taken sometime in the past because they always had an official photographer on hand capturing all those kind of private moments behind the scenes. And I think that's the way to do it, to actually have some sort of degree of transparency and not necessarily do the kind of the set-up photo shoots. Um, you know, if, if you've actually captured lots and lots of things that are genuine, you're going to find some much better images in there than if you actually attempt to just stage something. And Stuart, what are, what are the biggest dangers? What, what's your message to uh, President Rouhani now, if, if he's listening? I think the biggest um, danger is a lack of authenticity. Um, I think one of the problems with his account at the moment is we, is we don't know whether he's actually doing it. I presume he isn't. Um, but if you contrast that with the way some other world leaders do it, where they perhaps they're upfront about it being done by the communications team, and then occasionally they'll do a genuine piece of interaction themselves, and you'll see their initial being used at the end. So, for example, President Obama's Twitter account is very rarely him but occasionally you'll see ones with the B.O. at the end, so you know it's actually him. I think that's something I'd like to see President Rouhani doing. Just, just a final thought here, here Stuart. Uh, when you were in Tehran and you were talking PR, uh, th there's a paradox here, isn't there? Because here we have a hugely conservative country sitting alongside something that is very much of the modern age. How do you think the um, message went down? I think eventually Iran does have to open up and we had that kind of brief moment a couple of months ago when the Iranian people did have access to social media and to Twitter 
Um, I think it's, it's going to be really important that if Iran's trying to project a different image to the outside world, then that's got to be the reality. It's got to start having some um, more reforms internally. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Stay listening for just a moment. Because